Hey guys, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be filming my, what month is it? April wrap up. And I actually read a decent amount of things. I think this is the most I've read in a month this year, most likely because I didn't read that much in the first three months of the year. I barely read anything last month, I feel like, but I'm going to get right on into my wrap up. These are in no particular order besides the one that I read them because I couldn't be bothered to order them by rating. First off, I read Red, White, and Royal Blue, which was the book everybody read, I think it was last summer, maybe the summer before, and it's just a really cute contemporary about two boys. He is the son of the first female president of the United States, and then the grandson of the Queen of England, I believe is the situation. And this was super cute. I love their banter. I love the dynamic between the two boys. I love that this felt very realistic of the scandal that would happen if something like this came out. The only part of it that really bothered me is that there was not an, like, as much as I don't want it, the only thing that would have made it more realistic is if more people reacted badly to these boys coming out as gay, because I feel like there would be a lot more homophobia in this realm of thing and this book did not touch on that which was nice for it to be a very feel-good book but it did not feel realistic for the society that we have today so i love this i gave it four stars it was super cute i highly recommend next up i read a really random book that i'm not sure how i even heard about and that is monday's not coming this was much more of a hard-hitting contemporary than i expected it to be it started off kind of just like this girl's best friend went missing and her friend didn't really have the best home life and she didn't know about it and she's slowly figuring it out as time goes on and then there's like a point at the 75% mark that just like takes this in a whole much darker direction that I was not ready for and I was it was so much and like I really enjoyed it because it was a fascinating look at you don't really know what's going on in everyone's lives but also it was so hard to read. I do not recommend this if you are in a bad mental health space. I do love that it shows that you definitely need to show empathy towards everyone that you meet, but this was very, very dark, very dark. The ending is wild and I gave it 4.5 stars. Please go into that with that trigger warning. If you don't want any sort of violence or like home abuse, tread carefully with this one. Next up, I read I Had That Same Dream Again. I've had this since Christmas and just haven't read it, even though it's a manga and would take me two seconds to read. So I finally sat down and did a reading vlog that I will link down below of reading three of my short books. And this was the first one of those. This was really cute. I did not love it as much as this author's other book, which was I Went to Eat Your Pancreas, which was a very, very interesting, like more romance thriller manga that I highly recommend. This was more cute. I liked the plot twist in the end. It did not take very long to read. It's definitely something I feel like will probably leave my brain after a while story-wise, but I did enjoy it and gave it 3.5 stars. Next up, I read American Born Chinese. This is a graphic novel that I've had for quite a while, I feel like, and I liked it. The artwork is very fun. I like the way the pages are set up a lot. I like the artwork. The stories were all interconnected, which I was not expecting. I actually didn't know it was like multiple stories, but they are interconnected. So it is more of a novel than like short story format. I like the traditional like Chinese culture that was represented in this. I liked the way they talked about racism within the U.S. because obviously this kid grows up in the U.S. schooling system. And I liked life lessons that were in this. I really enjoyed it. I gave it 3.5 stars as well. It was a very, very fast read. And then I randomly decided to pick up a book that I like put down back in February <laughs> and that is the Creepypasta collection. This is a bunch of short stories based on the website Creepypasta. I don't know if you were around on the internet during that time, especially in like peak Tumblr days. This was very popular. I read a ton of the stories. Some of them have stayed with me for years because they're terrifying. <laughs> and I thought this collection was kind of going to be mediocre after reading the first half of it and then the second half had all of my favorite stories in it. So my personal favorites were a trick of perspective, was terrifying, if you live alone especially. The yellow raincoat was super creepy. And then Bedtime was a shorter one towards the end of this that was like much longer than all of the other stories and it was wild. I wanted an entire novel based on that subject of Bedtime. It was so scary. That and a trick of perspective I think could very easily be full-length novels and I would love to read them. But overall I gave this like a 3.5 stars. There were definitely some one stars where like books, books, stories were like two pages long and I was like what was the point of that? Why did you put that in this collection? Nothing happened. And then there were like longer ones that were really fascinating and would make very good movies or longer books. So 
short story collections are not usually my favorite so I'm not shocked to give this like a middle of the road rating but I did finally finish it which I didn't think I was going to when I put it down back in February. <laughs> And then I just got on a kick of Nina LaCour books. Nina LaCour is an author I've heard about on booktube for years because she had a lot of hit contemporary novels from like contemporary booktubers I used to watch and they loved her writing style and I just never picked her up because I've never really read contemporary a ton until the last year or so especially this year I've delved into it more so and the first one of hers I picked up was not super contemporary it's more magical realism and that is Watch Over Me. This deals with a camp slash orphanage where kids go to like work on this farm camp situation with a twist of the fact that there are ghosts that live on this farm and it's just kind of normal and all like the owners of the farm are like no they're just there it's fine we know they're there it's normal and it, you spend half the book wondering if this is supposed to be like paranormal or if it's more of a magical realism situation and you also get told flashbacks of this girl's childhood and how she ended up in the orphanage she also noticed that there's something creepy going on with the other kids that have been adopted into this family and that they all seem to have something in common that her and the other new kid does don't have and i found this absolutely fascinating i loved the explanation at the ending of what was going on this entire time. I loved the ghosts. I think the ghosts definitely made, probably made this my favorite of the three Nina LaCours that I read, but I enjoyed this immensely. I gave it 4.5 stars. Mm, 4.25, 4.5 stars. And then next up, I read a book that I've been wanting to read since I saw it because it's a beautiful cover, and that is Everything Leads to You. This is one that is about a girl who works kind of backstage on movie sets and she designs sets for this big Hollywood company in LA. And she's like very young, everybody's like, how did you get that job? And she's like, I grew up in California, like <laughs> you're just kind of handed opportunities here if you were well off enough. And her and her friend are at an estate sale and find this record that is supposed to be for this really famous actor who has just passed away that is supposed to be for someone that he knew and never told anyone about. And so they go on this quest to find the person that this is supposed to be delivered to. And they end up meeting this girl and the story takes off from there. I loved seeing the behind the scenes of how the movie industry worked in this. I really liked our main character. I thought it was slightly unrealistic how adult this like 17 year old felt being in like her own apartment that her brother was letting her rent out and like having this really legit job in Hollywood. I was like that seems kind of sketchy. <laughs> Don't know if that happens. Maybe it does and I'm just not aware of it. But I did really enjoy the like almost mystery aspect of this and I really liked the progression that the story had with the romance and everything so. I enjoyed this. I gave it 4.25 stars. And then I read We Are Okay. This is also a beautiful cover that I've heard about for years of Le Nina LaCour. And this is the one that really got me of I really like her writing style because while this one did not have nearly as interesting as a plot of a plot as the other two, I did still enjoy it because I love the way that Nina LaCour writes loneliness specifically. And I don't know if that's just because we've been in a pandemic for a year and like I haven't seen human beings in a while so I am relating to the loneliness aspect of these much more than I would have had I tried to read this two years ago when they were popular. But I love both her writing style and her ability to capture the feeling of loneliness and have it come out in her characters on the page. All of her books were very compulsively readable. I think I read all of them in like one sitting, maybe two sittings if I started at late at night. But I blew through all three of these in like four days. <laughs> Then the last thing that I have finished is You Must Not Miss. This is by Katrina Leno. I read her other book, Horrid, earlier this year and really liked it because it was very compulsively readable and it was horror. This is also horror, but it starts off more contemporary and then kind of delves into a portal fantasy and then goes down a horror route within the portal fantasy. And this might be one of my favorite things I've ever read because it has so many of my favorite aspects of stories in it. Portal fantasies being one of them. Horror obviously being another one. I love horror novels and <laughs> I love that this did not have a happy ending. Like that might be kind of a spoiler but I think it's very obvious from the get-go. And this girl's home life is crazy. She starts writing in this book or really a notebook of all the things she wishes the world was and then one day in her garden shed this other world appears and we go from there. I also loved the friends that she made in this novel. Her friends were some of my favorite characters. I loved our cast of characters. I loved every single one of them. They were all so fascinating. There was so much representation and I loved the realistic way that she looked at all of these people but also with this 
obviously like fantasy portal fantasy twist to it of a otherwise very contemporary story. I gave this 4.75 stars. I'm still thinking about this book. I finished it like a week ago <laughs> and I think it was fantastic. I also love this cover. This is not the American cover but if I ever buy this I'm gonna find this cover because it's beautiful. And that was all nine books that I read this month. As far as TV goes because I've been wrapping that up in the end of my wrap-ups I watched right after I got my first COVID vaccine and had some side effects of like nausea and like dizziness but not nearly as bad as having actual COVID. I just kind of laid in my bed and watched the entirety of The One, <laughs> which I read John Mars' book, The One, that this is based on last year? Was that last year? That feels so long ago. <laughs> but I read all of John Mars' books last summer and The One remains one of my favorites. The only, or rather the biggest pet peeve I had with the show is that they took out my favorite character and like perspective in the one because it's told from different multiple perspectives of people with this match DNA thing where you can figure out who your soulmate is like you would send in DNA from like match DNA to find out your ancestry it's that but with figuring out who you are meant to be with like your soulmate and they took out my favorite character <laughs> or like perspective because it was fascinating to read from which I did wasn't too thrilled about but I thought this was a super solid show it's not a like you watch the entirety thing of the thing and like are on the edge of your seat the entire time it does have a lot of drama it feels like a cop drama but with added like dramatic elements as if you were watching a soap opera because everybody's like kind of interconnected very interesting it was very well acted i loved our main character especially but it's been long enough that i've kind of forgot specific details about the show that i thought it was like a relatively faithful adaptation but there was definitely that one character that was missing that i remembered because it was my favorite but i think it's a solid adaptation of a book i would recommend the book over this show but if you are not a reader this is a good alternative. I don't know what you would be doing on a booktube channel if you're not a reader, but yeah, <laughs> it's on Netflix. It's only eight episodes, which is how I blew through it in the day. And then I have restarted Supernatural. I did not get all the way through season six, but I have gotten back into season six. Most of what is happening right now is I'm very annoyed with Sam. This is that point in the show where I'm just like incredibly annoyed with Sam as a character and I love him because like Dean loves him but also he makes all the worst decisions in the world all the time and it's so frustrating to watch. I also forgot like the main storyline of this season until we were a couple episodes and I was like oh yeah that happens. So like his behavior is explained but it doesn't make it any less frustrating to watch. <laughs> There's also a whole situation going on with all of the angels with Castiel trying to like corral heaven who is in chaos because they averted the apocalypse. It's not my favorite season. My favorite season will always remain season five probably but I am excited to continue watching this show. I did miss it for the like three weeks. I didn't watch any of it. And yeah that's everything I have read and watched in the month of April. Let me know what your favorite thing you read in the month was down below. I can't talk. Thank you all for watching and I will see all of you guys next time.